All right, guys, welcome back. And um, we're going straight to our first trend story that trended over the weekend. Um, Rema mm -hmm. gains admission into University of Lagos. Hmm. So, I mean, this story is very incredible, very funny, because he says his mom says he has to go back to school, and I wonder why he wants to go back to Unilad. Now, a certain girl tweeted saying that she's going to repeat a semester so that she can be in the same class with Rema. How stupid and absurd can you be <laughs> to say you want to repeat it doesn't make <laughs> sense. <laughs> I mean, um, <laughs> at the end of the day, it's just what it is. You know, people do things for the superstars that they love. But great one for Rema going back to school. I don't know how you could cope with, with you know, that. Um, is it going to be what? Distance learning or um, online? I'm not sure what it's going to be because how would Rema cope with, you know, being in the classroom and then having to go for shows? And, you know, like it's not a, co a place where... I'm not sure they will give you any consensus, really, because mm. you have to do the assignments. Attendance is a must. Like, how will he literally cope? So, um, I don't know. Davido did it, but Davido's fathers own the school. Uh -huh. You know, so Rema doesn't <laughs> own the Unilag or anything. So, let's just watch how it goes. But it's important that education um, like be, be, be provided, really. Um, I, I going back to school, I, I'm all for it, because at the end of the day, his music business just just got a new face. Mm. You know, when you're educated, you're able to put everything into perspective and make sure that your your career never goes down to the po point of you you not being able to go up. So, I'm happy for him. Really. He says also, I go try drop the album before I enter school. Make them no go beat me for uni. Like plus, I'm in the creative arts department. He added, so I don't really know how he intends to go about this. Is he going to be going with security? Mm -hmm. Because they were going to be mobbing him, class is going to be full all the time because Rema is in the class. I don't know how he wants to walk I, around. So this. I don't think that that should be much of a problem, really, because students know how to conform. Like mm. when there is a star in the building, I remember when there's this Nollywood actor who went back to school to study law. Everybody just knows when he's a Nollywood star and he's our class, but you just conform, you just go yeah. on with it. The razzmatazz of. Eh, First day, second day, third day, you're already used to him. You're used to seeing him in class. Mm -hmm. And then you move on with learning. I mean, he's there to learn as well. You know, so I think that that, that but I'm a bit surprised. And I'm happy that he's Unilag. I mean, I if he was some, yeah, him. you'd have probably thought abroad. But it's good. And we need to start encouraging our universities to understand that the world has really gone beyond putting, you know, students in a box, mm. if you permit me to put it that way. I understand the learning curriculum. I understand setting things, but in in other clients, people are able to relate to their lecturers and their classes via uh, via mm, Skype I mean. or online or whatever it is, Zoom, whatever it is. So I think that universities now, I mean, look at what some of the uni um, private universities are doing. Mm. Most of them are taking their classes online. I was with a friend and he had his tab, and and he was listening mm. to lectures and he was writing. Do you understand what I mean? So that is something that I think our federal schools and, and our state schools should begin to look at how we can modernize learning. And you know, some people say, well, I'm a celebrity, I can't go back to school, I can't do this thing, I can't do that. I mean, Rema could have said, I don't need school because he's already an established star, even though he's young. But that part of education is really, really important. You can't um, take it for granted. You the, cannot the, the, the take reason, it for the granted. The reason why you education is important is that education stays with you forever. Mm. Fame and music might not necessarily stay with you for a long time. I mean, you might not be up there, up there. Look at the great superstars, artists, you know. How many of them are up there right now? Not so much. Mm. You get what I mean? I mean, there was one time, take for example, Usain Bolt, one of the fastest 100 meters, you know, um, sprint star you would ever find. He's no longer up there. There's somebody who's the fastest now. So, um, yeah, I mean, I just feel like, you know, education stays with you for the longest and helps you go through whatever it is you are about to venture in terms of business, career, all of that, yeah. I remember looking at Megan Thee Stallion who got a degree. There was only this year. There are lots of them. Who lots of them who went back to school. The opportunities were not there before they found this new fame and money. Mm -hmm. Now that the opportunity is there, they will always chase their hard desire, which is to go to school. All right, so it's important to go to school whichever way. Some people say they don't need school, but school is really, really important. It is important. It gives you a different perspective, even if you've been working for years. And some people say, well, I've been working in this space, so I need to go back to school. I mean, you need, by all means, education is also very important. Although I know some people have education, and they probably 
don't have those opportunities. You see people are amassing PhDs and they can't get certain kind of jobs because it's not, it's not always all about the PhD. It's about what you do with what you have. So mm. it's balanced on both ends. You're a celebrity, get back to school if you can and just broaden your horizon. That's one thing and, and that's, that's, that's quite interesting and I'm happy for Wema. <laughs> Whichever Same way, those girls, there's a meme on our page, on Rhythm page, that says, Wema, when, he, when he's in school, and all the girls are bombarding him, and all the uh, funded level girls want to be his friend, and another one, where it's just really crazy memes on social media about Rema going back to school. Can't wait to see his experience in university. Well, that's because he's a star anyway. Um, we're moving on to our next trend story. It's in the posture, the first black man to win uh, best Oscar. Uh, yeah, Oscar died in 94. And I'd always known about Sidney Posha and his contribution to film. That's a in, celebration um, of life. Of Anybody life. who dies from 18, even 70 and above, mm -hmm. is a celebration of life because, I mean, by his special mightiness, we're able to live till we're 70, right? Yeah. So, uh, if you attain that age, it's a celebration of, you know, life in itself. 94, that is, that is living life to its mm. fullest, you know? Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah. He apparently won the Ac Academy Awards for the Best Actor for Lilies of the Field, a comedy drama in 1963. And he was acclaimed as the first African-American man to ever slap a white man on screen for his role in the movie In the Heat of the Night in 1967. Apparently he's gotten so many Academy Awards nominations, Golden Globe nomination, BAFTA, Screen Actors Guild nomination. And um, apparently... He became, or he became one of the last surviving major stars from the golden age. That's the, the golden age of the Hollywood um, cinema. And the oldest living and earliest surviving no Academy Award winner. Hmm. You know, because I think Kirk Douglas too passed last year. These are some of the men, one of the few living legends from that golden that era. era of Hollywood. And so he's definitely remembered for all the amazing things that he did hmm. in, um, in, in the world of film. And also Betty White too passed at the age of 1999. Betty White, she was very popular in America mm -hmm. for her work on television too, and film. So that's it with Sidney Posha. And uh, this next story is quite interesting. Shafi Bello is saying, divorcing my husband five years ago was a huge sacrifice. She yeah. had an interview with um, Trudy and spoke about um, what she gave up for her career, that she left her family abroad to come to Nigeria and then she had to eventually evolved to a divorce and that's what she gave up for her career shafi bello yes uh, okay so she gave up her marriage for her career is well, that what literally it is? she she had to sacrifice so she sacrificed that part to pursue what she wanted to do saying that means that she mm -hmm. divorced gave up of my marriage for her career mm, i mean it's, yes it's that's what she thing. did well i don't know people do different things for i mean you can't judge her really I wasn't in the marriage, so I don't know the details. However, it just sounds so wrong that you would give up your marriage for your career. It, it sounds so wrong, but then again, we don't want to judge because we don't know the details. You follow me? Mm -hmm. Sounds wrong when you look at it at face value or you hear it at face value. You're like, how is it that you're giving up your marriage for your career? However, yeah. If she had given us more details, we would have said, so okay. So what she said was that she was actually hands-on with her kids up until the age of 13, and then she left. Do you understand? She, she left hands, what? She left them abroad. With the husband? Yeah, with the husband. and came back to Nigeria. Uh -huh. She said, I paid the price of not having a connection with my children then. My daughter was 13. My son was 11. I was hands-on mother before I left them. So she left them, came to Nigeria. She said she felt very pregnant. When I mean pregnant, in the ironic sense of it, that she wasn't actually doing the things she wanted to do, so she left them, and that ultimately led to a divorce. Mm. Because she wasn't there. She, yeah, because she said before that, she quit her job to raise her kids. She raised them up to a point and then left them. So right now, she, well, she's in a good space in terms of what, those are some of the regrets she probably will have. And now it leads to the ultimate question of women sacrificing. So they say a woman can sacrifice, but a man can't know that women mostly sacrifice a lot of things in marriage. So, so when people bring up this argument, I, I, I tend to make them understand that, you see, the woman's place in, in a marriage is one that is defined with so much greatness and grace because um, it's a lot of, as much as men would say, oh, women ha uh, men have the responsibility, but women have more of the very important responsibility, which is taking care of the home, which includes the husband and the children. Um, now, 
where there's balance is where you have a spouse who is supportive to be able to say, okay, you know what? So that you don't knock off your dreams. I remember when RMD posted something about my wife quitting her job to mm. um, pursue her dreams. And then he came back and said, because of the criticisms he got, he now came back and said, look, she didn't quit because of me. She quit because, first of all, she wanted to focus on the children. Mm. So it's a thing of choice. So if Shafi Bello had stayed 14 years old, because her first son is what at the time was 14, right? So if she had sacrificed 14, 15 years of her life, taking care of her che- kids, and then suddenly realized that, okay, look, I'm not where I want to be in terms of my career. Maybe I can come back to Nigeria and become a megastar, which eventually that was what happened. There's always a price for everything. Would I judge her for it? No, because at the end of the day, she achieved her dreams, mm. but there's always a price to it. it seems like and I don't have to know the greater price. And I don't know this m- issue more like because and it's, it's 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 stigmatizing if you look at it. Well, it can be, but I, I think, like I said, with a supportive spouse, mm. um, like I said, I don't know the intricacies behind it. But if I don't want to, if I'm in that situation and I don't want to lose my wife. I'll take a trip down to Nigeria with her. I, I actually know a family now. The woman has got a big job overseas. The man used to work at a bank here. I use the word used to because he's quit his job and followed his wife. Because <laughs> he says, look, yeah, that's good though. I'm not going to let many, my wife. How many men do that? I'm not going to let my wife do stay here. <laughs> no, I'm not going to make my wife stay here okay. and, uh, sorry, be abroad and I'm here doing what? Mm. You know? Forget the keys or anything. It's not even because about that. Literally, when you look at a case where the man is in Nigeria and the woman says she wants to go abroad and pursue a better life, and the man wants to stay in Nigeria, and the man is saying, "No, you cannot that go cost, that can, no. because I want to stay. I need the kids to be in Nigeria." But you are saying you want a better life. Look at those things. At the end of the day, it's almost like the woman has to make the ultimate sacrifice. While the man is what he wants is this is not a I mean, so what no, man wants no, conversation, no, but this is something no, that is trending. I, I wouldn't want you, you to know? put it that <laughs> way. I know that some men can be very hot-headed and they, they want it their way, their way. But marriage is marriage is a it's a situation where two people are talking about their issues and, and making informed decisions together. So it's a conversation. I know a family. You know, we know of families that. The, either the wife is abroad and the man is here working and she's there with the kids. You know, mm-hmm. it's around us a lot. Yeah. We also know the, the reverse is the case where you have the woman here and the man is abroad. In short, back in the day, before things became a bit more better, now that you know it's better, women are the ones going and taking care of the kids. Of before, the kids. it's the man that we go and then be sending money back <laughs> home. <laughs> <True>. <laughs> you get what I mean? But things have changed. Men are now having more fun to say, okay, let me move my wife and my kids abroad, mm. stay there, raise the kids. Let me kids. just be chopping life. See where your brain is going. Chopping life in Nigeria. See where your brain is going. Why, TK, why if is you, your brain? If you, if you, ha- if you, so, you, see, if you, I just you see, you're already being negative. But that's what no, people is to no. do now. You're already <laughs> no, I say no. crazy. How is it that so. in your mind... That's you're not what thinking of do. the you're not thinking of the hard work he's putting in in Nigeria. <laughs> I like the hard work he's putting. Working hard. <laughs> do you know how hard he has to work? Because the currency, I know. The currency, I know. The Definitely currency know. difference is why the variance mm. is why. Mm-hmm. So you have to work two times that money and send to you. I like know. There. I understand. Uh, so what is the enjoyment there? I understand. There? <laughs> no one tell me <laughs> what is the enjoyment there. No, no, I understand. I'm just yeah. saying that um, in some cases. Yeah, it's an advantage for him to do what he so wants you to So you now, do. you will not allow your husband. You will not go because you want to monitor your husband. Uh, no, I'm going, no. <laughs> I will go. So, but well, you, won't, you won't be worried what he's doing here, would you? Can you see? Can I'm you see what he just <laughs> said? <laughs> she can said, I won't be worried what he's doing here. Oh, what does he have to be, be doing? Or would you be worried what he's doing here? As long as he's <laughs> taking care of you. Can you see? Are you Let's worried? not have that conversation. I'm not worried, honestly, because he's not doing what he's not supposed to be doing. But then How do you know? Are you there? <laughs> You that said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, it's just neither there or there. At the end of the day, the man is sending money. Some men, no, I'm not going to lie, all men. No. I don't think there's any money. No, so, money is as long. No, so as hold long on. as mm. any money, the woman so, cannot complain. No, no, that's not it. <laughs> because money, money isn't always the priority, mm-hmm. right? As long as there's a family value system yeah. that is working. And what is the family value system? Oh, I'm sending my wife and kids abroad because I want them to have a better life, sort of. Mm. You know, I want, oh, I'm going first to secure the ground and then they come. I mean, men make these decisions with their wife. Couples mm. make these decisions yes. for the betterment of the family. Mm-hmm. So 
where we start to individualize this mm. decisions, that's when problem starts to come because you're not thinking, isn't he doing this because of his own selfish inclinations or because of some ulterior motive he has? Mm. You know, do it because you want the better. <laughs> and why you have it's going to be why, Chike will love that arrangement. <laughs> no, just say, oh, Chike, oh, I know Chike I, no, will so love that me, arrangement. No, I would always want to be with my wife. Always. <laughs> always. What, Let's what, move what on. What am I away for? I mean, think about it. Okay, uh, Chike, I, I'll hold you on that one, though. <laughs> I'm I'm so, I mean, that's, that's the, it's neither here or there. And, um, so, he quit his, uh, the man I was telling you about, quit his job in the bank. And I'm talking, like, well-paid. He's one of the top, top guys oh. in the bank. Well, not top, top, but, yeah, he's Okay quit his job in the bank and then moved abroad with his wife mm. so men actually there are men who make those sacrifices really at the end of the day okay you know. let's move <laughs> to our last trend story this trend over the weekend as bob biscuit apologizes oh please publicly for asking why about benito that? why did you put that story this is very funny we'll be frankly sandra's story just broke this morning yeah we that i don't like talking about bob why biscuit, don't you really? he's a human being why Ma, the point I wanted to just highlight from the story not, was the fact that said, he, 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 he was on a clout mission. She. Him, she was on a clout chasing mission. Did a video of himself and say, ah, we are in uh, Vinny City. They said, oh, bye, bye, me. And then, <laughs> of which a lot of people in Vinny did not like that because they say they hold their culture in very high esteem. And then there was apparently elders in Benin who did a video and said he was she and she was shipped back on the first flight back so I just feel like when you're in a state, when you're in a town that is a certain, I mean, you for the fact that even you are even a he or she, you're going to someone else's state. You need to try and just cackle it's in a just, certain way. It's not just being in anybody's state. You need to always watch what you say. And Bobisky just on a good day, he says a lot of things. He Particularly on social clouds. media, this is this would teach him a, him she a lesson <laughs> him, she. that you just don't open your mouth because you've got a mobile phone and you have data. And you can just say whatever you... Because that's how I feel Bob Brisky is. He just... <laughs> he talks carelessly But on the other listening. hand, if you look at it, it wasn't such a bad thing. Was it a bad thing he said? Was What's it that? If you, on the flip side, what he said, mm. was it a bad thing? Disrespectful. Hmm. Disrespectful. That's a monarch right there. Um, how many... And then that's a... That's a monarch that is revered. You know, people don't... It's like... It's like talking... Saying the only if you fetch come and marry you. Well, what I mean, oh yeah, if I come marry me, he might <laughs> take the offer. <laughs> for a him, she. <laughs> no, okay, for him, she. That is why it's uh -huh. disrespectful. For a mm -hmm. him, she. Like, mm -hmm. you don't, we're already condoning you or condoning your him, she-ness. <laughs> and then you now decide to do that. I mean, you need to draw the line, really. While we accept some of the things that he does or mm -hmm. the society accepts what he does, it doesn't mean that you should now rub it in the faces of certain people who are, you know very high up there in terms mm. of our culture and our tradition so um I, would i say he got what he deserved maybe but it, it was better than the threats that i was seeing who oh, are going to beat him we're going to disgrace him <laughs> you know we'll turn him back into a man uh, we'll turn him back fully into a woman he quickly you know, did an apology sorry did an apology video <laughs> saying you sorry that those things are not nice really yeah i mean you need to be careful <laughs> it was the guy at the front of the seat for me that was just <laughs> clearly irritated by what bobisky was with. I don't, know what to, I don't know what to say. Maybe it's just a case. But I mean, that's still we're trending. And uh, well, still, this is one trendy story. I don't know if we talk about this now or maybe we'll take a break. The mommy Gio that has literally flooded our way with her meme. And uh, there was an interview that was done with her. And then she said that everything that was put on social media is actually a lie. Maybe we'll just take a break and then we'll come back and talk about it. It's a really hilarious um, trend. And it's amazing things that can go viral on social media. So please stick around for that. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere.